Many people today are taught that capitalism is fundamentally selfish, that it's only about making profits and getting rich. That's wrong. Free enterprise is about people meeting each other's wants and needs. It's about giving. If there is one achiever whose life illustrates this, it's Fred Harvey. Before there was McDonald's, before there was Marriott, there was Fred Harvey. At the peak of his career in the late 19th century, his hospitality empire encompassed 65 restaurants and lunch counters and a dozen major hotels at train depots across the American West. Fred Harvey came to the U.S. from England in the 1850s as a poor immigrant in his mid-teens. He started out in the restaurant business, washing pots and pans, and quickly moved up. Eventually, he went out west. He then worked in a succession of jobs, most of them centered around the growing railroad industry. It was said at the time that railroads were better transporting freight than people because freight doesn't complain. Locomotives would belch out suit and hot cinders through the windows into passengers' faces. Railroad hotels and eating houses weren't much better. Food was putrid. Service was said to be intentionally slow so that unfinished meals could be served to the next round of unsuspecting passengers. Harvey thought he could do better. In 1873, he and a partner opened three restaurants along a small railroad line. He served everybody who passed through. Patrons dined on fine china and linens. Tables had ice water goblets and fresh flowers. Fred Harvey did more than bring quality food to Western travelers. He helped tame the Wild West. Men had to wear jackets in his main dining rooms. Employees were expected to do things the Fred Harvey way. Also boosting Fred Harvey's reputation for refinement was his use of female servers known as Harvey girls. They were young women who usually hailed from towns in the Midwest. They wore prim uniforms with starched white aprons and lived in chaperone dormitories with a strict curfew. They became such icons of Western culture that they were immortalized in a 1940s movie starring Judy Garland, titled The Harvey Girls. After he died of colon cancer in 1901, his will decreed that the Fred Harvey way would continue. And it did for decades into the 20th century. The railroads had made Fred Harvey, but then came the rise of autos, the decline of train travel, and fewer customers for Harvey restaurants and hotels. Fred Harvey, the company, was sold in the late 1960s, though several of his original hotels survive today. Harvey understood that the way to wealth was taking care of your customers. His achievement is a textbook example of how free markets over time don't just elevate standards of living, they also uplift the culture. I'm Steve Forbes.